Hello everyone. In this session, we'll understand the Torch Custom Data Loader class. The Torch Custom Data Loader class allows you to create your own data loader for your own custom data set. You can speed up the task of loading your data set by using parallel processing and automatically create mini batches from your data. All of this task is done by the Torch Custom Data Loader quite easily. Why do you need a custom data loader? That is because sometimes you'll need to use datasets which are not automatically available inside the Torch library. You might have seen that the Torch library already has MNIST, CIFAR and other popular datasets. But there are many other datasets which are not available by default inside Torch. To load them, you need to use the custom data loader. What the custom data loader actually does is you first have some original data. The data loader will automatically shuffle your data set and start processing the data set. While processing the data set, it will create queues of the final processed images. When your Python program tries to access some data, it will from the queue gather the batch size amount of data and it will create a batch from that. All of this happens parallelly. So this ensures that while your model is training, your processing is also happening on your computer. And when the, uh, your machine learning model needs the data, it can get it with within zero seconds. As the batch has already been made and it is there in the queue, when your, when your program demands the batch, it can just fetch the batch from the memory, which does not take any time. So you completely remove the time it takes for loading your data, which can be a very huge advantage when you are running, let's say your code for 10 days. Your computational time for training your model is 10 days. And in that, let's say 30% of your time goes in loading your data. You can reduce 30% of the time by using the Torch Custom Data Loader. So now that we understand how important it is to use the Torch Custom Data Loader, let's start looking at the code. First of all, let us see what the structure of our data set would be. So we have a data folder inside which there are multiple folders with the name class 0, class 1, class 2 and class 3. Inside the class 0 folder, there are multiple files named image 0, image 1, image 2 and image 3. Similarly, for all the different classes, what we want to do is we want to read the data, read the images and we understand that these images on the top, they belong to class 0. The images inside the directory or folder class 1 correspond to the target class 1 and so on. So you want to load this data and automatically create batches from the data set. So let's see how do we achieve this task. So over here, I have defined the custom data set class, which is derived from the parent class data set. This parent class data set is provided by torch utils.data import dataset. So this dataset class is present inside torch utils data. We also import the data loader class, which will have a look at below in the main code. I have also in imported further libraries, which we'll see their uses as we go through the code. So at the very beginning, let's see the flow of the code. When we are executing this file, the name under dunder name for this file is equal to main. So this if condition is true and our first statement which will be executed will be dataset equal to custom dataset class and the path of the data folder. If we have a look at the data structure again, then there is a data folder. It has class zero class one, class two and class three folder 
inside which there are four images belonging to the specific class. So we pass the path of the data folder inside the constructor. Now let's see how do we read the images and create a mapping of these images to each target in the constructor itself. So first of all, we save the path in the member variable of this class itself by using self.path equal to path. So now the different functions of this class will have access to the path by calling self.path. Next, we create empty lists having the variable names, all image paths and all targets. The all image paths would have the path of the image and the corresponding targets will be present in all targets. We also create a mapping because all targets will have numerical values. But our classes actually have a name. In your real example, the class 3, class 2 will have a name like a dog, cat and so on. So to convert your numbers to the classes, we create an array which will have the corresponding at the corresponding index of the target it will have the name of the class so if the target is 0 then at index 0 the name of the class would be present in your real life examples if dog corresponds to the target value 0 then the 0th index of this array will have the value dog similarly if cat corresponds to 1 then the first index will correspond to the value cat and so on. So our target to class is an array having the list of the class names. Now what we want to do is we want to iterate over our target class. We want to go over each folder which is this class 1, class 2 and class 3 and then load the images in our self.all image paths. So we first enumerate over all the class names. So in our target I, we'll get the folder name class 3. To get the image I, what we do is we use os.list directory, which will list all the files inside the directory whose path is self.path, which corresponds to the path of the data folder plus slash target i. So this will correspond to the directory like class 3 for example and we list all the files inside class 3. So this will give us a list having values image 0.png, image 1.png, image 2 and image 3.png. We sort them and then we iterate over the sorted list of the paths. We get the value of each path inside image i and then we append to the empty list self.all image paths the path to the image. We do that because this image i has only the value image 3 and we want the entire path of the image. We have to again create the full path by using self.path plus slash target i plus slash image i. This will create the whole path of the image and append it to self.all image paths. To get the target number, we used enumerate over here. Enumerate provides us with the index or the current iteration number and as well as the value of the target to class. So target i will have the value like dog, cat and so on. Target number will have the value 0, 1, 2 correspondingly. So we append the target number inside the list all targets and we create corresponding image paths and their targets inside these two lists. So in self.all image paths we have the path to the image and in self.all targets we have the corresponding target for that particular image. We iterate like this on all the classes and all the images inside of it and we create lists having the path names, the path 
entire path of the image and the targets. Over here, I have applied some data augmentation and we will learn how to do this in the later sessions. You, for now, you can ignore this. So after doing this, we have got the image paths and targets. Now we need to actually load the image. We will load the image when we are actually trying to access the elements. So we'll have a look at this get item after we have gone through the original code. Once we have created our data set object and the constructor has already been executed, we'll get the data set object which has the image paths and the targets. Now we create a data loader from this data set object. We pass the data set object. We specify the batch size while training gradient descent will be taking some subset of the entire data set. So we specify the batch size over here. We want to specify that our data loader should have parallel processing capabilities. To do that, you can specify the number of parallel workers which your computer can provide. The optimum number to set your number of workers should be less than or equal to the number of threads inside your core. So let's say you have an IFI core and it has four cores. It will have correspondingly eight threads. So your number of workers should be eight. Depending upon the version of your IFI core, you might have only two workers or four workers. So you can specify the number of workers depending upon the threads on your CPU, which you can check it out on Google by looking at your model number. Next, you can set shuffle equal to true or false. While training, we shuffle our data set so that the random gradients which are generated from the batches average out and do not create any bias. But while testing, we want to ensure that the sequence of the samples always remains the same. So that is why if you are creating a train data loader, then you should set shuffle to true. But if you are getting, uh, creating a test data loader, then you should set shuffle equal to false. Now that you have created your custom data loader object, you can iterate over it to get your images and targets. We do that by using the syntax like this. The enumerate returns the value of the index or the current iteration number and it also returns the values returned by this iterable. This iterable will return images and their corresponding targets. But we need to write the code where our custom data loader object will return the images and the targets. We do that inside the dunder get item function. So when we are creating our data set, we define the get item, which takes in the current position value, which is returned by the data loader class. So over here, we'll get a number like 0, 1, 2, and so on. The number will have the maximum value less than the length of the class. So we also define the dunder length, which is equal to so we return the value length of all image paths. So this self dot all image paths has the length equal to the number of images in the data set, which is what we return from this function. So this item value will always be less than the length of the self dot all image paths and it will be always greater than equal to zero. We use this item to load one image path when we do self dot all image paths of item, one image path is picked. We open that image and we convert it to an RGB value to get the image. So over here, we have an image object. This image dot open has been imported from the pillow library and can be used to open the image. To get the corresponding target, we use self dot all targets of item. So this will provide us with the corresponding target of this one image. To do data augmentation, we use self.transforms, which we'll have a look later on. We have defined self.transforms over here. 
once we do the data augmentation and transform the images we can apply image processing over here inside the transforms as well then we return the image and the target please pay attention that we have only written the code to load one image and one target when we use the custom data loader object it will not return one image and one target it will automatically return four images and four targets because the batch size has been set to four so this data loader object will in parallel will run this get item function four times with different items it will then concatenate the images so it will club the four images into one array and then it will return those images and targets over here once you get your images you can iterate over the images because there are four images image i now has one image you can convert it to numpy transpose it to provide it a suitable format for plt to show the image and then use plt to show dot show to show your images this way you can create your own custom data loader which will run in parallel and ensure that it does not take much time while you are training your models so that is it regarding the torch custom data loader if you guys want you can have a look at the custom data loader in the workshop repository at autonize